Rondell Lane Podcast, and we are back with another episode. Today we are here with Q from the QMF Agency, is that correct? Yep. First off, I want to say sorry for being late, but tell us a little bit about yourself, where you come from. Yes, hi everyone. My name is Quinise Fish, and I'm the owner of QMF Agency. I'm from Chapel Hill, North Carolina. That, that's it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, tell us a little bit about your um about your childhood, like your interests coming up. Yeah, so growing up, let's see, I went to Catholic school. I've always been extremely athletic. Uh, I ran track for a majority of my life as well as like gymnastics, softball, violin, piano. I was one of those kids who really just did a lot of extracurricular activities. You know, as the only child, my parents really wanted to just keep me busy. Tell us a little bit about the QMF agency. What exactly is that? Yeah, so QMF Agency is a creative agency helping creatives and entrepreneurs grow online and build community. Okay, so I, I see that you have that going, and you also have a apparel line? Is that- so, yeah, I did get started with e-commerce. That was, like, the first company that I ever started. Um, I haven't really been, like, pushing that these days, but I'd love to eventually be able to do a, a rebrand. Mm-hmm. Um, and that company was really just about motivating minorities to uh, work out more through apparel because I feel like when you look good you perform even better with the marketing agency um, you basically go in and you do ad work commercials and things for other companies and brands correct yes how do you go about finding your talent um, from models to your videographers photographers yeah so I have been blessed with the opportunity to have talent actually reach out to me and have videographers reach out to me. So that's mostly how I find people um, through them finding me on social media. So I do think social media marketing is very important. Um, We do a lot of social media marketing for our clients and that's how a lot of our clients find us. So we know that it's definitely working. So when it comes to that, like, have you, how do you handle having to um, like fire people that are working for you or they're not putting out the type of uh, quality that you're looking for like how do you deal with that yeah so for the most part the like other creatives that I've partnered with on projects I've had a grateful experience of we've always like done successful projects I think as far as like firing anyone I've only had to tell one or two people that I didn't want us to work together anymore out of like three years okay. so that's I don't you know God's been bringing the right people around us cool. and the way that I went about that was just very professionally I just sent them a professional email um, telling them that I felt that you know our values didn't align and that I would like to like sever any relationship do you have any experience yourself um, like behind the camera with do you have video skills photography skills? yeah so you know what I I do have like a little small camera small little Sony camera and mm-hmm. I've done some photo shoots with that. I wouldn't call myself a photographer, but I would say that I have an eye for what looks good and what doesn't. So I have taken some really good pictures before, in my opinion, um, especially with somebody who just doesn't have much technical skills with how cameras operate. Um, However, more recently, I've been learning a lot more because that's who I work with mostly, a lot of photographers and videographers. So I learn a lot of stuff from them. They give me a lot of good tips and tricks. Okay. Um, So... Tell the people how, how old you are. 25, everyone. 25. So at, at a young age of 25, what inspired you to like start a business? Yeah, so I'm one of those people that I always knew that I somewhat wanted to be an entrepreneur. Uh, my dad, he has a nonprofit organization that he started a few years ago, and he would always just talk to me a lot about how he felt like I was a leader and that I should be an entrepreneur and um, that I had some really good leadership qualities. So I really took that to heart and I just spent my time in college trying to figure out what my business idea would be because I already knew that I was an entrepreneur. Um, And I worked out a lot during that time and I ended up getting recommended to teach some group fitness classes at school. And that's how I ended up coming up with my first company idea, which was, hey, we could do workout clothes. What did you study in college? Biology. Okay. Yeah. Now I'm an entrepreneur. (laughs) Now I'm an entrepreneur. That's kind of how it goes. Um, So you said you've been in business for three years with QMF? With QMF for three years. I've been an entrepreneur full time for four years. Okay. So if we rewind the clock three years, that puts us in 
like 2020. Yeah. So, like, what was your, how hard was that starting a business, like, during the pandemic? You know, it was very challenging. I feel like there was some pros and cons to everything. I ended up starting QMF Agency because my other company essentially failed. Um, I had got so many resources from doing selling the workout clothes that I was like, okay, what can we do like with all these resources? We had a bunch of influencers, we have a bunch of models, we have just a bunch of videographers and photographers that we work with already. And that's how I ended up doing QMF Agency, which started off as just a talent company. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna help the talent that I've been working with get booked for other gigs too, because they've helped me so much like get my company off the ground. So to start doing that during the pandemic was a little bit in my advantage, just because everybody had a lot of extra time to help me do what sure. I was doing. Um, and they didn't mind like pulling up to my house and pulling up to these certain places, you know, as long as we are six feet apart and had our mask on, um, they just had more time to, to extend that help. So I feel like that definitely worked in our advantage during the pandemic. But as far as like not having access to like actual like real studios and things like that, that was extremely challenging. Personally, how do you go about branding your business or even just like yourself, like as a personal brand? Yeah. Okay. So that's a really good question. Cause I often talk about how like technically QMF, I haven't put a lot of time or effort into the branding of QMF. Um, so really right now our overall like focus is just community. And I like to say like community through content where we're just taking actual photos of us having a good time in the community and just posting that there's no real strategy to it right now. Um, as far as my personal brand, my personal brand is really lifestyle. It's travel, business, uh, fitness, you know, just motivating people to try to have like a healthy lifestyle. And I do that through just posting photos and just really having fun. Like I try to tell everybody like strategy is super important. That's, you know, obviously mm -hmm. the bread and butter. However, you know, sometimes you don't want to put a lot of focus on that. You want to just focus on being genuine. So I say right now, our main strategy is just being genuine and showing people like the real behind the scenes of what's happening. Have you worked with any big brands? Yes. Okay. So I, I did a big project with Google for startups. We did the Black Founders Exchange. So we did the full content development for that like last year. Maybe that was two years ago. Actually, it was two years ago. Not the one they did last year, but two years ago. Um, so that was amazing, like sitting in Zoom calls with like Google executives and like the people who make sure people are monetizing on YouTube. They're like in the room with me talking to me. That's dope. And I just, I don't know. I, I never would have thought that I'd be in a room like that so early on in my career. Um, and getting to do the content development for that program also put me in the rooms with like some angel investors, some VCs. Um, just some people who are like getting like million dollar salaries at their company, mm -hmm. like as a uh, entrepreneur. So that was really exciting. And then more recently, I got to do a little like recap video for a Nike campaign. Cool. So that was really great. I actually got to get behind the camera that time. I was um, taking some like just behind the scenes shots and some of my footage actually got added to the recap video. So oh. I'm like, you know, a little bit of videographer. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> I've always wanted to work with Nike. Like I have a, that's one of my, um, I wouldn't say bucket list things, yeah. but I do want to do some type of project. Try to Nike. get on their yard runner campaign then. Okay. Cause it's spearheaded by a bunch of young black people. And that was also amazing. Like meeting the faces who like proposed this idea. Mm -hmm. And they were all people who looked like me that were like around my age telling me things like they just got back from Tokyo, like doing some stuff for Nike and they're just traveling all around the world. And I'm like, wow, this is awesome. Like y'all are so young. Um, so, you know, I definitely love what they're doing over there. How do, how do you feel about, um, well, if you've heard about it, but Facebook announced that they're about to stop monetizing reels. Have you heard about that? Oh, wow. No, I actually did not hear about that. Yeah. Like, I know that I saw like Instagram is no longer prioritizing reels as far as the algorithm goes, but yeah, that, about that's to stop probably part of it. Yeah, they're because they had like a yeah. bonus program going. And I uh, saw, so I am on the bonus program. However, I have not been utilizing it that me much. Either. I got to it. actually make money. 
but some of the creators that my mom is like really invested in with watching them they make full-time incomes off of facebook bonuses so and that, that's, that's what some people were, were talking about in the yeah. comments was like you've literally had people that have built a, a livelihood office, yeah 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 and they're pulling it i think um i think at the end of this month or something like that wow yeah. why do you think that is um well if you if you've been noticing with big tech they're they're crumbling they're laying people off like wow. Google, Facebook, uh, Tesla, these big yeah. companies. Tech Some companies. of those creators are bringing in the dough. Yeah. Millions of dollars yeah. on the bonus program. Yeah. They were saying they were like giving examples of people making, you know, 30 grand, 40 grand a month off of reels and stuff wow. like that. Like it's, it's, done. it's ridiculous. <laughs> my, my thing was always um, YouTube. Okay. I always tell, tell people out of all the platforms, focus on YouTube. I agree. Long form content. Yeah, because and and then even now they got shorts. Right. So even if you want to do reels or things like that, you can just do shorts. True. But and yeah. I mean, the shorts. I feel like you can get a lot of followers quickly. Yeah. From yeah. posting a lot of shorts. I know I have personally, yeah. so I guess I can only speak from that standpoint. So like with your company, I see that you have a lot of black and brown people. Was that a priority or? Yes. So. Our company is a definitely a priority when it comes to helping minority creatives. And that's just because we don't have the same type of opportunities as everyone does. Um, and there is a lack of representation in the freelance like industry when it comes to being a creative with people who are doing this full time. And when I did some research on why that is, it's because most of us black and brown people feel like we can't sustain our creative freelance careers, that it's not like a realistic choice for us because of the lack of support that we have. And I wanted to be able to change that. And I feel like throughout my journey as a creative, um, growing up, I did a lot of like acting, singing classes and things like that. Um, I feel like I'd always ask people like, how do I get to the next level? Like, how do I get paid without having like thousands of dollars to pay other people? And they'd always say like, you gotta know somebody, you gotta know somebody. That was just like the running thing that a lot of people told me. Mm -hmm. And I definitely internalized that. And I was like, you know what? I want to become the person that people need to know to get these opportunities. Um, so I've just positioned myself in a way where now I have been able to open a lot of doors for a lot of people um, through the, like, I guess, doors that I'm trying to kick down. Or, you know, really, I would, I'd like to say I'm one of those people that s just stays in my, my lane, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily try to go after opportunities that just aren't for me, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So you know how they say, like, uh, build your own table? I'm mm -hmm. a build your own table type of person. Like, gotcha. instead of trying to, like, squeeze a chair at this table where they don't want you to sit and there's, like, they're not giving you food and you're just, like, crumpled in there, just build your own table yeah. and have people fill it. I agree with that. Um, have you ever cast yourself, like, in one of your ads or – or like one of your clients ads. yes i actually have uh that doesn't happen too often but i have had a couple of scenarios where i submitted my headshot as well and the client ended up picking me and then you know be on set and they're like oh it's you and i'm like yeah <laughs> and they're like you're the person i was emailing and i'm like yep <laughs> but i'll just you know i i'll just submit myself like a, a regular talent like i won't be like oh this is me specifically i'll yeah. just be like here are the people who fit the description. Um, I've only done that a couple times though, and yeah, it went really well. And I've had, I have had like at least one time where someone specifically wanted me to be in their campaign, mm -hmm. and they paid like extra to have me be in the campaign, wow. which I really liked. So mm -hmm. that was really fun. Okay. So, so what's next? Like, do you have any other business ventures or ideas that you want to? delve into yeah so i think what's next for us is we just want to continue to curate a safe space for minorities and entrepreneurs to connect collaborate and you know find new opportunities uh we've been recently curating in-person networking events and that's something that we've been having a lot of success with so i'd love to continue to expand on that and just continue to grow those networking events um, we just launched a new membership actually that's called creatives night out and this membership is $20 a month. Right now it's on sale for $15 a month where 
essentially it's like a resource hub for any local creatives in like the southeastern region where they can immediately get access to our ebooks our e-guides we do monthly workshops where we talk about different creative things they get free access to that our in-person networking events they get free access to that um, so it's really anybody who's looking to get out the house more as a creative or just learn more and be surrounded by like-minded individuals um, this is the perfect opportunity for them. So we're really about to try to push that creative membership hard because we know we know how helpful that our resources actually are. And we actually have a lot of surveys that show because it's one thing to say that you're helping people, but it's another thing to actually have, um, you know, information that supports that. People are filling out our surveys and, and telling us that we are helping them get paid opportunities. We're helping them build their portfolio. We're helping them build their confidence. And we're just overall helping them like, scale their creative careers okay yeah I've, I've seen a few of your um your events on social social media yeah. like instagram you're yeah. gonna have to come out yeah i definitely want to uh, i want to check check one of those out they look fun yeah so, yeah <laughs> um it'd be a good vlog also i vlog you say you sh- vlog yeah if oh, i show yeah, up i'll probably have vlog. a camera so awesome just, that's more content for both of yeah, us then. just let you know <laughs> do you focus on doing personal content on like youtube or anything so I do have a personal YouTube channel. I posted a few videos. I'm not very consistent on like my personal YouTube channel. Maybe. I would love to be a little bit more, but long form content is something that's hard for me to do when I have to be in front of the camera. But I'm, it's something that I've been really practicing and working on um, in little ways by like putting my face on the QMF page more. Because when I first started the page, I didn't have myself on there at all. So it's more recent that I've started doing like little clips of me talking about certain things just so people can know who I am more because it's at the point in the company where there's a lot of people who know of my company, but Mm -hmm. they don't know me. And I don't necessarily like that, you know, where when I'm meeting someone and I'm saying who I am, like they don't know who I am. And then I'm like, oh, well, follow me on social. And they're like, oh, I've been following you for years. I know this page. And I'm like, oh, you. You, you don't know who the owner is? Yeah. That used to happen to me a lot. Cause I just, I just thought I changed my company name to, like, yeah. my name. Yeah. They just don't know who who runs QMF yeah. Agency. So Can't put I, the face with the name. Yep. That's why I really appreciate this opportunity to talk about the company a little more so people can start recognizing, okay, Quinice QMF Agency. Um, a lot of people think that it's uh, a man. Really? Yeah. Um, and it makes sense. I feel like the entertainment industry slash like production and marketing is can be very male dominated sometimes. That's true. But I, I, when I look at your page though, I feel like it looks like a woman's running. I feel it. like it's obvious, <laughs> but maybe that, maybe I'm jaded. Cause I kind of know that you, run yeah. it, but I don't know when you're not uh, producing or directing people. Yeah. What do you do for fun? Like hobbies, relaxation type stuff. So I love to travel. I'd say like outside of traveling, I don't have that much time to do some of the hobbies I like. Like I love to paint, I love to dance in my spare time, um, but I try to like do some fun dances on TikTok and social media. That's really fun to me. But for the most part, I'm super passionate about traveling. I've been to 11 countries so far. Nice. And I'm going on like a tour of Europe next month actually. So I'm super excited about that. I'd love to just, you know, position myself and everyone else around me to be able to to have more travel opportunities. How do you how do you um like when you're out traveling, how do you handle the task for your business? So, I try to automate stuff as much as possible. Um, so when I'm going out of town, I just let my clients know and we just automate a lot of their stuff. However, I do have a support team for the most part. So if I need somebody on site doing something, I have a few people that I can call. Do you feel anxiety when you have a production and you're not on set? Oh, yeah, of course. Okay. I feel, you know, I just, I'm calling, I'm checking on it the whole time. So definitely, I will say it is hard to take vacations. I do travel a lot, but will I say I'm like fully present on the trip? Probably not. Like I'll still do a little work. I'll still make some phone calls or just check in and make sure everything's going good on set. But I've gotten a lot better at that as time progresses. Yeah. You were, um, I was supposed to, I was supposed to meet you a while back. Um, yeah, I remember it was, it yeah. was a lot. going. Cool on Cannon shot time. a, he shot something here. Yeah. For you. 
And, oh um, yeah. Oh, I think you were supposed Miami. to show up or something, but yeah. Man, you didn't. I was stressed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was like get some get some behind the scenes, get some behind the scenes. Yeah. They they got a few behind the scenes, but you know when I'm on set, I get some really high quality content of everybody that we all get to use this content to post on our pages. So that's I'm really big on grabbing that BTS. Yeah, yeah, that's the most important thing. Like that's that's almost better than the um the product nowadays. Honestly, like because when I, when I just post photos, it doesn't really do anything. Yeah, but if I post like a real. Or even in my stories where, like, you can kind of see the behind-the-scenes set up. It. Yeah, it just does so much. BTS is some of our highest-performing content. Yeah. People want to see the process. They want to see, like I said earlier when I said that right now, um, because I don't have much time, our main strategy is just being genuine. Mm -hmm. People want to see that genuineness. Right. They want to see what it looked like when y'all were setting it up because they know that finished product, you know, some edits went into that, some... Right. This, this, that, you know, it's been warped into something that looks basically perfect versus the un imperfect, you know, behind the scenes that people can relate to a little bit more. For sure. Um, so if I was a model and I wanted to work with QMF, yeah, what's the process? So let's see the process right now. I guess it depends on what you want to do. If you're like a model who who has a portfolio and you're just looking to get more gigs, then I'd recommend you just like reach out to our page. Either me or my assistant will respond to you. We'll set up a meeting. Um, we'll just talk a little bit to make sure that like your values align with our values. And then we'll just add your headshots to our database and we can just go from there. Um, however, we do have a modeling program. We're not currently accepting any new models, but I will definitely post on our page where we are. Um, which is for beginner models who don't have a portfolio. They don't have what they need to start getting like actual gigs yet. Um, we take them through this year long program where we help them build their portfolio through photo shoots. Um, we get their headshots updated every single month. They attend monthly and weekly workshops and in-person events. Um, it's quite similar to our creative membership, but only it's geared towards specifically models and it's um, an annual fee versus a monthly fee. And yeah, and then at the end of the program, we've had a lot of success with models actually starting to land paid gigs um, through coming through the program. So that's something that we've had a lot of success with helping a lot of people with. With traveling, you said you've been to 11 countries, right? Yeah. What was your best experience? What's the best country? That is such a hard question just because I feel like every experience was so unique in itself. But I'd say like one of the most recent trips that I feel like I got like the best overall content, the best food, the best experience, had the best time would probably be Mexico. And that's because that was my first time staying at an all-inclusive resort, which I've never done before. So I felt like there was a lot of activities on the resort. Um, just being able to go to a bunch of fancy restaurants and order anything that I wanted. Any you time know, of the day. Any, any time, time of the night. day, room service. I've never been able to like afford to order a bunch of room service right. before. So to just be ordering a bunch of room service, whatever we want, um, it felt like a sneak peek into the the lifestyle that's coming for me. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, what part of Mexico were you in? Cabo. Yeah, I went there. Um, Twenty twenty one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was out there for a wedding, and we had all inclusive. That's awesome. Like, yeah. All me, me and Cool Cannon so actually. Nice. Oh, I, I've been seeing his travels on his page. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Cabo. I definitely recommend anyone go there that's actually the type of content that i post on my personal youtube channel i do like resort reviews and things like that i talk a little bit about business but i'm more so trying to get into the travel influencing industry so you I do know yeah you, do, you know you can get like yeah free travel like, yeah during the pandemic i actually landed my first paid deal where i was going to get paid and get free four night stay at a resort in thailand and same deal, you know, it ended up falling through because of COVID and everything mm -hmm. that was happening. But that was that was going to be my first like shot to like go and stay for free. But, you know, another opportunity will definitely present itself. Um, but in the travel influencing world, you definitely have to keep reaching out and, and definitely working on that personal brand. Yeah. A few years ago, um, I was hearing a guy creator. He says uh, like local places. Yeah. Like in your own city. You can reach out to them and let them know what you do. Yep. So and a lot of times you'll get deals. So they'll expensive room, you'll get it for free. 
Wow. Like, even if you have a, you don't necessarily have to have a big channel or a okay. big a big following. And just high quality content. Yeah, you just gotta keep, like you said, keep mm-hmm. trying and uh, restaurants, mm-hmm. all type of stuff. That makes sense to me. Yeah. I'm definitely gonna keep trying. So hopefully, if I come on this podcast again next time, I'll be a full time travel influencer. Yeah, that, I wanted to do that a few years ago, but I don't travel enough. Yeah, especially right. when like you know I have a a large community around us with QMF. Um, more so recently, I was able to like combine my passion of travel with QMF by doing a creator's retreat. So we did the retreat February 24th, and this was a high ticket event. We sold tickets and let's see, we sold 10 tickets and 10 minority creatives like bought tickets to come with us to Blue Ridge, Georgia. We got a huge cabin. We rented a huge van. Some people met us up there, but mostly we drove everybody up there. And it was like a weekend of content creation, relaxation, workshops, community, team bonding. And it was just awesome. Like some of the people there said they never even went. They've never went out of North Carolina before. Like they've never been out the state. So it was just so inspiring to be able to create these safe spaces and opportunities for people to come on some trip like that, to get out the house, to come meet other creatives. Um, and everyone really walked away saying that they felt really inspired overall just by being around so many other creatives that mm-hmm. do what you do. Um, so I want to keep curating some like big, unique opportunities like that for people to come and just have a good time, right? Yeah. Have you uh, have you ever traveled al- alone? Yeah, I have, actually. Really? I went to Costa Rica by myself. Um got a couple tour groups like booked a couple of tour groups when I was out there and I just I met some really cool people ended up meeting an Asian girl and me and her were like besties the whole time I was there we went to a couple other cities together while we were in Costa Rica and then when we got back she was from Minnesota I want to say a few years after that we ended up doing another trip we went to LA and had an amazing time and we still stay in contact every now and then on social media but yeah so that Solo travel is definitely something I, I encourage people to do because you can't always wait on, you know, your friends and family to to travel. Sometimes they're not going to be free the same time as you or they're just not going to want to go and you right. can't let that hold you back. For real. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, and just to provide a little motivation to anybody that might be listening. Um, did you have any experience mm-hmm. in like marketing, video, photography, any of that? prior to you starting no. this company? Had no experience in entrepreneurship, business, anything at all. I just decided to start my company and do the Figure research. And most of the stuff that I did learn though, I will say most of the skills that I acquired were from that first company that I started. Um, Cause you know, when you first start in your business, you're the one that's doing everything for it, the sales, the marketing, the everything. And I just had a lot of success off my first company when I finished school I went straight full time into my business which a lot of people don't do and would say that it's crazy to do Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't have that much money during that time at all but I made enough money with my company to sustain my lifestyle at that time and dang what was the question Um, well (laughs) I was asking you like basically like with with no experience experience, how how did you figure this out oh yeah yeah so just doing my own just doing my own thing and actually investing a lot of time into education. I went to YouTube University. I went to Google University. I took notes. You know, it was school, really. Yeah. I went to school with what I had to do. And once I did that for my company, people just started asking me to do it for them. Hey, can you help me do my social media? Can you help me? And I was helping people for free, just helping my friends, family. Yeah. And then one day I was like, wait a minute. I should get paid for this. <laughs> then people started paying me to do that. And then I was like, oh, okay, I'm good at this. Like, people are happy with my services, and they're telling their friends to book me, too. And that is how we kind of ended up turning into QMF Agency um, with me just practicing, I guess, by doing mine. And then other people practicing on theirs, like, they're like, oh, okay, I'll just let you run my page. Like, not going to pay you, but, (laughs) (laughs) you know, yeah. So that's really how I got started. Um, A lot can change in three years. Is it? Is it scary for you? Because um, now you, you said you've been self-employed for four years, right? Yes. So, four years later, is it is it easier? Or is it still scary? Like I'd say it's easier. 
Um, it's really a mental battle. So the mental battle has definitely gotten a little bit easier. Um, I have a lot more trust and confidence in myself overall. Like being a full-time entrepreneur, I feel like it teaches you how to make money. And when you know how to make money, regardless of the situation, I feel like that gives you a lot of confidence. Like it doesn't matter if I go get a job or if I work anywhere, if they fire me, if they shut down, I'm going to make money, period, of the situation. So I feel like that's really like having that confidence just makes you feel you know unstoppable yeah when you feel like you can you can do it regardless but don't get me wrong sometimes the anxiety definitely it gets to me it bothers me but i don't stay in that state of mind long because i know that uh mindset is a very big part of moving forward and uh, so you're 25 and you've been self-employed for the past four years yes have you ever had like a real job I was working at, where was I working? I had two jobs, actually. I was working as a salesperson at Orange Theory Fitness, and I also had a catering gig. However, that was one of those ones where you would, you just sign up when you wanted to. Like, when there was an available slot, you'd sign up, but you didn't have to go every single day, like Orange Theory Fitness. So those are my, like, last two real jobs. I haven't had, like, a real corporate job before. Um, which I'm not opposed to. I've had a few companies reach out to me. So if I get a good enough offer, I would definitely consider it. But for the most part, yeah, I went straight into being a full-time entrepreneur. That's awesome. Um, so that was definitely interesting. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, um, let the people know where they can find you, like online, if they're yeah. trying to check you out. Yeah, so tap in qmfagency.com, or you can follow us on any social media at QMF Agency. Our YouTube is QMF Model TV. We post a lot of cool behind the scenes and interviews on there, but we also have all this stuff on our website. So please tap in with us. Once again, this is Quinise Fish from QMF Agency. So I hope to see all of you guys soon at one of our events. Sounds like an ad, yo. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I appreciate you coming on. Once again, um, like I said, today was a little haywire, but we got it done. Um, you guys, thank you for tuning in for another episode of the Rondell Lane Podcast. I don't even think I named uh, what episode this is. I, I really don't know. I think it might be like 14. <laughs> but, yeah, like, share, subscribe, all the good YouTube stuff, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace. Yep. That's it, <laughs> Thank man. you so much. No problem. That no was problem. awesome.